All right, thank you, Raj. We're going to switch back over to Sri, right, um, who's now doing endoscopic ultrasound on his patient. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Sri, we can hear you, and we can see endoscopic ultrasound uh, images. Can we put uh, Floro up on the center screen for a second? It's, uh just so you can see the final. Uh, so we um, pulled the sutures out. We got all the suture out. Uh, and we went ahead and placed a, a plastic stent. Uh, again, I think that stricture is not as functional um, as we think, but I think the sutures coming out may help. But for the edema, we went ahead and just placed a single plastic stent this time. Uh, we're not concerned about this needing long-term multiple stents uh, with the sutures coming out because she's, uh, again, not jaundiced. Perfect. So what you're seeing now is if you see in the center of my lumen, there, there's the area of the stricture. Just so you can understand, uh, on the US, you guys appreciate the stent going through. It's a little bit right in the middle there. Um, but the bile, obviously, as you would imagine, there's biliary uh, thickening. We just wanted to make sure there's no mass or anything concerning in this area. We don't see anything else. There's not significant lymphadenopathy. Those of you on the panel doing US guided liver biopsy, so given our history of rejection, they asked us regardless uh, to get tissue here. And Carlos, can you comment on? Left side, right side, both. Uh, yeah. Should we do every uh, more than one sample here? Yeah, this is a very good uh, uh, discussion. You know, uh, the original technique was uh, developed to perform both uh, lobes, but in, in this case, uh, Sri uh, and I we we agree that uh, uh, we are suspecting a rejection. In where we have a rejection. Uh, normally, it's the same in the whole uh, liver. So one side could be okay. The other situation is that uh, uh, one of the things that I believe is, uh, uh, is, a, is a big discussion, uh, and at the beginning when uh, it started the U.S. liver biopsy was uh, really, uh, uh, at the beginning I believe that was not necessary because uh, until now radiologists already perform a good uh, liver biopsy. Uh, percutaneous, but uh, when you see the rationale of uh, of this new technique is uh, this kind of patient or patients that are very obese, when sometimes it's very difficult to have uh, access to 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 a good uh, liver biopsy. So um, uh, in this case, that we needed to perform an ERCP at the same time with the US and to take biopsies, I think is a very good option. The second is that uh, the results. Uh, uh, published in the literature is, is very good now because uh, we have uh, one advantage is that we have more than 12 portal space, uh, uh, more than 12 portal space that normally we needed. And uh, the, the mean is uh, between 20 and 24. So uh, it can give a little bit more of details for, for the pathologies to see uh, what happened with, with uh, the liver. I don't know if it's really uh, is in accord with my, 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 my opinion, but uh, uh, this liver is uh, suffering huh? because it's uh, yeah. an irregular surface here in, at the US and, and probably, it's, uh, uh, probably it, it could have a rejection. Huh? Yeah, so you know, I think we're gonna try to get both sides and we'll demonstrate that. So what you're seeing now is a 19 gauge acquired needle. It's a core biopsy needle that we're going to try to demonstrate that we can acquire uh, liver cores here. Uh, panel, uh, doing liver uh, biopsy, what are your practices? What are you using? We're, we're using a 19-gauge uh, biopsy needle. And, um, you know, I, I think the point that you asked before, the question about left versus right, you're right. If it's shoddy disease, then you're going to do both lobes. Left is much easier. You're stabilized in the stomach. Um, and you have your choice of the entire left lobe um, minus any vessels. Um, but in terms of the right, I think it's a little bit trickier when you're first starting. Um, but yeah, we use uh, 19. I actually just pull back. We pull back the stylet and go back and forth. Yeah, so we're starting with the stylet a good six inches out. Um, and so I made that puncture just now after looking at Doppler. And, uh, so, Shri? So um, my partner, Mohammed Hassan, uh, presented this at DDW, and, and uh, uh, it's soon to, uh, to be submitted for publication. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot coming out about the technique. We, uh, we heard the, uh, <coughs> the presentation from David Deal's group on wet versus dry. We did our study uh, actually with a 22-gauge uh, needle, uh, and we... Um, uh, we did both the right and, and left lobe, and it was a very, very favorable uh, turnout. For us, the, the key is, is 
uh, in actually how you express the specimen. Uh, and uh, so we would do usually three or four passes, usually slowly, so in and out uh, yep. three or four times. But uh, you express the specimen very, very slow by advancing the stylet very, very slowly toward the end uh, so that you don't fracture it. Um, and then you deposit it uh, sort of like a worm into, into, into a formalin. Yeah, so I think we're trying to, uh, we're channeling your energy there, Rob. So we're trying to, uh, about three to four uh, passes back and forth using capillary or slow pull technique um, with the stylet out, going slowly. Um, and so this is our first left side. What we're going to do is uh, we'll express this very slowly, and I want to just show um, everyone um, the, 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 tissue, uh, the tissue that we have, and, and then we can sort of move on and uh, do the second pass uh, off camera. Um, but again, this is an, an interesting dilemma that comes up, but definitely in this scenario where patients with liver transplant, we do one day in the RCP, another day a biopsy, and, and et cetera. Uh, it may add significant benefit from a number of procedures, but there are other situations it's, that you've described there um, for unexplained elevation of LTs where we wait longer. And this is, you know, I think uh, we feel comfortable. We're watching Doppler. We're making sure this is a safe uh, method. Um, but uh, anybody else on the panel, any thoughts? I have a question for, for you and, and uh, Rob. In, in terms of, uh, you know, obviously this is not a cirrhotic liver, and, and your experience on, frankly, cirrhotic livers and the adequacy of the specimens with this technique. I, it seems to me that most of the experience is in non cirrhotic livers. Um, I just was going to invite some commentary on that. Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, our experience is mainly with non cirrhotics and it's the same indication that Shri uh, indicated. Um, uh, it's people who are uh, like these transplant patients uh, or it's people with, uh, uh, you know, with abnormal liver tests uh, and maybe a dilated duct. Uh, and then we do uh, endoscopic ultrasound. We don't see any problem. And then we do a liver biopsy right at the same time. So uh, I don't have a, a huge amount of experience in cirrhotics um, uh, to comment on. But the, the specimens have been adequate uh, that we've got that we got uh, in the study. Can we show? Are you guys seeing the specimens? Uh, we've not seen the room view of the specimens. No. Can we should switch the room cam and we'll show you what we uh, can yeah, see. Nice we can piece. see the specimen. And we find uh, Nash um, fatty livers to have much better cores, and I think John Dewitt just uh, about a year ago published a paper to you. saying their yield was uh, greater in patients with Nash. Okay. So great. So I think we got a nice acquisition there. We'll go ahead and uh, let you go from this room, and we'll do the other side of the liver from the antrum. So, uh, so do you work from the antrum, or do you go into the duodenum? To so get let me the... show you that real quick. We're getting good imaging right here from the antrum. Um, we took a look from the duodenum. It's a little more uh, demodest, so we want to watch out what we're kind of interposing there. But this looks like a good window right here, uh, Rob. So I'm, I'm hubbed right at the pylorus right now. You guys seeing the ultrasound view? We are. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do this again, and then we'll let you go. So this is a Doppler. looks pretty good, except for some microscopic vessels and needles. We're going to pull the stylet far back on this. And we will come out. You can see the needle tip, and again, swift puncture. You can see my needle tip there. And as you talked about, kind of a long throw, but slow pull back here on uh, capillary technique. So we're going to make slow, long throw, slow pullback, long throw, slow pullback, and keep going. <laughs> and then about four times, and then we're going to come out. OK, um, thank you all. I think uh, we had a nice demonstration of post-liver uh, uh, transplant and uh, biliary complications. The, the nice thing here, too, is you don't see anything hyperechoic, which would, uh, you know, suggest bleeding. So that's the nice advantage or, uh, of this ultrasound-guided technique um, yes. by EUS as opposed to percutaneous. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Shree.